I've chosen the essay of Wojtyla on subjectivity and the irreducible in man. It seems to me the best introduction to Wojtyla's personalism. I always start with that when I teach his personalism uh, to my students. And I think it is one of the best introductions to personalism that we have. In it, Wojtyla captures some central personalist intuition. So I thought it would work well as an introduction to the entire seminar. Now you see in the title, uh, I gave my presentation that I refer to the so-called turn to the subject. And as you know, this is something which is said to be a kind of signature of modern thought, this turn to the subject. And one commonly thinks, and especially within the world of Catholic thought, that this turn to the subject is a very dangerous thing, that it is the root of many evils in the modern world, the root especially of many forms of subjectivism. Thus, one commonly thinks that instead of turning to the subject, our task is to return to the object. Only in this way can we remain connected with reality. Now, while Wojtyla certainly makes no concessions to subjectivism, he thinks that the turn to the subject can be understood in an entirely positive way. More exactly, he thinks that there is a way of turning to the subject that lets us deepen our understanding of man as person. He thinks that the Christian personalism so dear to him is possible only if personal subjectivity is explored in a new way and only if it is taken more seriously than it was in earlier ages of philosophy. What then does Wojtyla exactly mean by subjectivity? You've all read the essay. Through my subjectivity, I exist as a subject, not just as an object. Am I being heard uh, in the back? Not here. No, no, I, I got you. Okay, very good. Good. Just, just give a signal when I drift away from the microphone and. I'm not being heard. At least give me a signal if you want uh, to uh, uh, hear me. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> so as subject, I live my being from within and do not just encounter it from without. Of course, I can also experience my being from without. This happens when I see myself as others see me. But there is an experience of myself from within that only I can have. The language from within suggests to us the interiority of the human being. And interiority is, in fact, almost interchangeable with subjectivity. My subjectivity is simply me living out of my inner center. Now, I'd like to uh, make use of a term that Wojtyla does not use, but I think expresses his thought exactly. In my subjectivity, I am present to myself. I cannot, in the same way, be present to anyone else, nor can anyone else be present to me as I am to myself. 
in being present to myself, I live from within the fact that I am myself and no other. Another would have to be me in order to be present to me as I am to myself. This self-presence forms a contrast with me thinking about myself as an object that is given to me and to others. I may, for example, think about my career as a teacher and compare it with the careers of my colleagues. In this case, my access to my career is just like the access that they have to it when they listen to what I say about our careers. My career becomes a public object to which I and they have equal access. But in my self-presence, I am withdrawn from public view so that I alone have this access to myself from within. Now, of course, I know that there is subjectivity and self-presence in other human beings, and others know that I am present to myself. In that sense, my subjectivity is not hidden from others, nor is their subjectivity or self-presence hidden from me. <clears throat> but there is a difference between knowing about the self-presence of others and being present to others as I am to myself. I can know about the self-presence of another, but I can only be present to myself. So I say that this self-presence shows us what Vojtiva means by subjectivity. Now before proceeding and connecting all of this with personhood, let me bring St. Augustine into the discussion for a moment. Now, Wojtyla does not mention him in this essay, but I think we are aided in our reading of Wojtyla if we mention him. Now, I have always thought that the first discussion of subjectivity in Western philosophy is found in Book 10 of Augustine's treatise on the Trinity. And Augustine brings it up in the following way. He examines different ways in which we search for something that we don't yet know. We may want to know what a foreign word means, or know what the real intention of another person is, or to know something about the angels. These are all the examples of Augustine. And the mere act of wanting to know these unknown things does not make them known to me. We still have to make some effort of investigation in order to come to know them. But if the mind wants to know itself, Augustine says, there is no further investigation to be made in the very wanting to know itself. It is present to itself and thus has attained what it seeks and has nothing further to seek. So Augustine asks again and again, like a refrain throughout book 10, what is closer to the mind than the mind itself? And Augustine clearly realizes that this is not a closeness of the mind to itself as object, but rather a closeness of the mind to itself as subject. It is the subjectivity of human beings that he marvels at throughout book 10 of the treatise on the Trinity. But now returning to Wojtyla, the central idea of his paper, as I read him, is the link between subjectivity and being a person. Wojtyla's central claim is that nothing reveals man as person like subjectivity or interiority does. Without bringing subjectivity into the discussion, we can think of man as a rational animal, as an individual substance of a rational nature. We can even capture some essential differences between 
man and the animals, but we have not yet captured man as person and have not yet understood what most of all distinguishes man from the non-human animals. That is, we haven't done this as long as we do not uh, consult the evidence of subjectivity. Let me try now to explain a little more this connection between subjectivity and being a person. Let me do this by referring to John Paul's Theology of the Body. At the beginning of those addresses that make up the theology of the body, he meditates on the two different Genesis accounts of the creation of man. The second one, he says, is more subjective than the first one. That is, it expresses the subjectivity of Adam and Eve more than the first account does. The more subjective account, for example, speaks of the shame that Adam and Eve felt on account of their nakedness after they had sinned. Now, shame is a mode of self-presence. It is a way of being present to oneself before another. And John Paul says that he prefers to use this more subjective Genesis account for his theology of the body because it yields a more personalist understanding of man and woman. Adam and Eve encounter each other in an eminently personal way when they feel this shame in relation to each other. The first Genesis account speaks of Adam and Eve being fruitful and multiplying, but this fertility of theirs does not express their subjectivity in the same way. Fertility is evident from without. It is not experience only from within. Nor does fertility express their personhood like shame does. Animals, too, can be fruitful and multiply, but only persons can feel shame. So it is entirely understandable that John Paul, who is in search of a personalist understanding of man and woman, prefers to work with the more subjective Genesis account of the creation of man and woman. So we readily, we re readily recognize here the connection between subjectivity and being a person, which is the central idea of this essay of Wojtyla. And now, we are in a position to understand the contrast that Wojtyla draws between the cosmological image of man, as he calls it, and the personalist image of man. This is simply the contrast between man considered from without and apart from any particular attention to his subjectivity and man considered from within with special attention to his subjectivity. The cosmological image does not underline man as person, whereas the personalist image does. Thus, for Wojtyla, the view of man in the first Genesis account is mainly cosmological, whereas the anthropology of the second account is distinctly personalist. The cosmological image expresses a snug fit of man in the world of nature and of the larger cosmos. The personalist image expresses the sense of man as incommensurable with the cosmos and radically irreducible to it, as Wojtyla expresses it. In the cosmological setting, the problem of objectivizing human beings hardly arises, whereas in the personalist setting, this problem arises as a major problem. And we constantly express the mistreatment of human beings in terms of the excessive objectivizing of them. In the cosmological setting, we think of man 
in categories taken from the study of nature, such as matter and form, act and potency, genus and species. Whereas in a personalist setting, we think of man in categories that have no place in the study of nature, categories such as self-presence, self-possession, intersubjectivity. Wojtyla wants to say that in order to develop the personalist image of man, we need the concept of lived experience. You recall how that uh, concept keeps appearing in the text of the essay. But this concept of lived experience plays no role in the philosophy of nature and in the development of the cosmological image of man. Now, Wojtyla also claims in this essay that he thinks that the Aristotelian philosophy of man is predominantly cosmological, and that it is only recently that a more personalist understanding of man has emerged. And in the other essay on Thomistic personalism, um, he says that the personalist dimension of man is not missing, but still underdeveloped in Aquinas. Now, I think we should save for Wednesday the examination of these claims, because it's on Wednesday, like John Henry says, that we will set personalism in, in relation to the Western philosophical tradition. So I, I note these provocative points in the Wojtyla essay, um, but I suggest we set them aside for the purpose of today's discussion. Now, it's very important to see that Wojtyla has no intention of replacing the cosmological image with the personalist. It is rather a relation of complementarity that he defends. The cosmological image has its truth. We really are beings that can be apprehended from without. We really are objects, though not exclusively objects. We learn new things about ourselves when we see ourselves as others see us. So for Wojtyla, the composite nature of man, traditionally expressed in terms of body and soul, can also be expressed in terms of object and subject. And just as we are not all soul and no body. That's the heresy of angelism. So we are not all subject with no objective dimension of our being. A good example and a very concrete one of the danger of neglecting the objective in man can be found in today's debates about gender identity. Take a biological male who experiences himself as a woman if he lets this self-experience trump the truth about his biological makeup, he is letting the subjective trump the objective in an extremely problematic way. Or another example, if a man feels himself as personal subject to be so incommensurable with nature as to be a foreigner in the midst of nature and the cosmos, then he has lost touch with the cosmological truth about himself that he exists in a profound solidarity with nature. So Wojtyla, uh, as I say, does not play off the personalist against the cosmological. He wants to enrich the traditional understanding of man by adding the personalist dimension to the long recognized cosmological dimension. Here we touch upon uh, another issue that will um, uh, be uh, on the table on Thursday when we discuss certain dangers that personalism is exposed to. And undoubtedly, there's a certain dualism of person and body uh, that is a danger um, of personalism. Uh, it's a dualism expressed by an American 
uh, feminist who was debunking all uh, the elements of uh, Christian sexual morality. And she said, God doesn't care what we do with each other's bodies. He just cares whether we treat each other as persons. You see, as if the treatment of each other as persons were not itself embodied. Uh, and so uh, that, uh, that uh, depreciation of the embodiment of persons, that's uh, one of those uh, perennial temptations of personalism that will have to be addressed on Thursday. So <clears throat> we see this central idea in Wojtyla's essay, uh, namely that a deeper understanding of man as person must be built on a deeper understanding of man as subject, as a being of subjectivity or interiority. I want to dig with Wojtyla just a little deeper on this connection. Uh, and I want to show you how he identifies um, as a fundamental structure of the person what he calls self-possession. Uh, and, and by this he means that as person, I am not simply a being that is objectively there, but I exist in a certain reflexive way. I exist as handed over to myself, as a problem for myself. And on the basis of this self-possession, Wojtyla argues, I am in a position to determine myself in freedom. Being handed over to myself, I can determine myself, and of course determine myself as I can determine no other being. So the personal structure of self-determination builds on the personal structure of self-possession. And it's easy to see the connection with subjectivity. I experience these personal structures in my self-presence. I experience them, first of all, from within, not as an object over against me. In being present to myself, I experience myself hand it over to myself. In being present to myself, I experience uh, my freedom, the beginnings of my freedom. Thus it is the lived experience of self-presence that lets me come to myself as person. Take away this lived experience of self-presence so that I'm related to human beings only as objects and their personhood escapes me. I tend to revert to a cosmological understanding of them. And there is another deeply significant dimension of the person that shows itself in our subjectivity and really only there, according to Wojtyla. You notice that he refers several times in the essay to the unrepeatable character of each person. When a human being is understood to be a person, he is at the same time understood to be more than an instance or a specimen of the humankind. He does not just exist to instantiate the humankind and to perpetuate it, but he exists for his own sake. He is never just a human being, another human being, but this, this unrepeatable person. He has, Wojtyla says, a surplus of being beyond having human nature. And he is thereby established in an individuality that is far more powerful than the individuality of an instance or a specimen of some kind. Now, Wojtyla thinks that the sense for this unrepeatability is much more developed in the personalist than in the cosmological image of man. This is because the, this mysterious individuality of a person comes fully to evidence only when we experience a person living out of his or her own center.
Now, there's a misunderstanding to be anticipated here and um, warded off. Uh, when you hear Wojtyla saying so much about subjectivity in this article, you may wonder if he goes too far in this direction and gives us an image of the human person too much closed in on himself. You might say, what about the transcendence of the human person? And by transcendence, we mean this power of the person to participate in and order himself towards the good and the beautiful that is above himself. No, Vojtiba is very takes very seriously this transcendence. And in fact, he brings it into the discussion of this essay when he mentions the moral life and the role it plays in the existence of persons. You may recall it. Toward the end of the essay, he says that our subjectivity, and in particular, our self-determination, is never so deep as when we choose between good and evil. But at the same time, this choosing is a, I quote him, basic expression of the transcendence proper to the personal self. And he goes on, and I quote him again, our decisions of conscience at each step reveal us as persons who fulfill ourselves by going beyond ourselves towards values accepted in truth. And of that quote, in other words, he finds in the moral life the unity of deep subjectivity and transcendence towards the good and the true. He recognizes our subjectivity as a transcendent subjectivity. And of course, in other works, like the acting person, expands uh, greatly on this dimension of transcendence. Well, let me conclude here by returning to the beginning of this paper, where I said that for Wojtyla, the uh, modern turn to the subject need not end in subjectivism. This turn to the subject can sensitize us to uh, the subjectivity or the interiority that makes us to be persons, and can let us understand more deeply uh, the mystery of the human person, including the transcendence of the human person. When then we are asked what this personalism is that we are studying in this seminar, we can answer with Foytiba that it is the understanding of man that is enriched by taking account of the dimension of subjectivity and interiority, enriched in the sense of bringing the mystery of personhood uh, to light. Now, this may not be the whole of personalism, but it captures uh, this idea of Wojtyla, captures something very important about personalism and lets us get started with the work of this seminar. Thank you.